Welcome guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Yee! And today we are going to be reacting to three disturbing true Home Alone horror stories uh, by Mr. None Other Than Mr. Nightmare himself. Yee! I'm excited for this. I'm also terrified for this too. Anyway, please subscribe, turn the notification, click the bell beside you. Anyway, let's get into it. Before we get into it, I wanted to say that I got my first job. You know, I'm excited. I couldn't be more proud of myself, you know. You now I've been waiting for this, so, you know, I have a job here, but then I can also focus on my YouTube channel, which I'm very grateful for. So, yeah. Uh, so I'm very congrat congratulate me if you like. Thanks. Anyway, yeah, let's jump right on to it. Sorry about that. Friend's house alone watching his dog. That inspired you to do another home alone. Don't have any subtitles. I keep forgetting the subtitles every time. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. I spent so much time reading stories. I'm, I've got chills down my spine. I forget these things could happen to me too. In a bit of a different fashion, I'll tell that experience I had after the viewer submitted stories at the end of the video. The more positive experience I would also like to talk about is my experience with Scentbird, a fragrance subscription service that allows... Boy, seriously, ads? ...pink pepper and vetiver for a classier scent, and Cross River Gorilla by Sanctuary for a more casual scent. So if you're looking to start your own collection... Head on over to Scentbird by scanning my QR code. My favorite scent is probably Jude. There was hardly anything to do. <laughs> like staring at trees and crops and lots of alone time. That was the place to be. I got out of there as soon as I got a car and enough money to move. I'm not a nature hater or anything, but I'd pick being by a big city any day. My parents don't own that property. Anymore. I love nature. They sold it five years ago. <laughs> That's just me. Describe it. It was a three-acre property. The house itself was pretty big, and there was a storage building out back. I was 13 when this happened. My parents would leave me alone often at this age. They trusted me because I matured at a young age and I had responsibilities on the property. It was a weekend, and I was playing Vice City on my PS2 in the living room, when suddenly a loud metallic bang came from outside somewhere in the yard. And right away, Not even, we're not even like three minutes into it and I'm already got chills down my spine. If I had a Metallica bang in my house and I was home alone, <laughs> I'd be called my bestie and be like, eh, can you come over to my house? I'm I'm actually terrified. Yeah, thank you. Okay, bye. Yeah, yeah, seriously. That is absolutely terrifying. <laughs> I feel like I'm over reacting. <laughs> but seriously. The door to it was completely open. I went in need and grabbed a rifle from the closet and go outside. I made my presence known, shouting who's in there, to no avail. When I got to the door, I made it known I had a gun before looking inside. There was a bunch of stuff smart, in there, smart. from the sit-down mower to the quad to infinite little lawn care items. Someone could have been hiding behind any of that stuff. Even as a kid, I didn't scare easily. But at that moment, I got really unsettled. So I closed the door to the building and went back inside the house. I locked the door and then sat at the window for the longest time, watching the storage building, expecting the door to open at any second. That door was heavy, impossible to just open by itself. It was simply a fact that someone came and opened it. Whether they were still inside of the building, I wasn't sure. I decided to go call my dad and ask his opinion. I went to the kitchen for the landline phone and called my dad's cell phone. He didn't pick up, so I left a voicemail. This was back when you'd still have to leave someone a voicemail because texting wasn't mainstream. After that, I went back to sitting next to the window. But now I put on a TV show in the background to make this less monotonous. I took the phone with me. I was probably about to give up, 
I heard creaks from upstairs. My heart was now in my throat. I had to ask myself the big question. Was I working myself up or was someone here? Yeah, someone is definitely here. What do you mean? Hell no. Nah. I heard like little creaks like... Oh, like... What, like, like that? No, I'd be out. Full swing out of there. I had a serious bar door of brutality. Even if I didn't love that place, I saw it as mine, my family. Um, the future of mine. I had to protect it. And I was in over my head. I grabbed the rifle again, walked upstairs. I didn't say anything. Calling out would only make a potential intruder know that I heard that. I made it to the top of the stairs, and I turned on the light in the upstairs hallway. There were five doors to open, all of them closed. Four led to bedrooms, one led to the bathroom. Each door had a decently large crack of it that would allow you to see under it. The creak in the ceiling I heard the other side of the house my parents' bedroom was on. So I got down on my knee, looked under the crack of the door, and I saw two bare feet facing the other side of the door. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you look under the crack, you dumbo? Like, seriously. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, I'm shaking. I'm actually shaking. My, I've got hairs, if you can't see it. But I've got like, hairs on my arms, like, sticking up. But Home Alone... I, I have paranoia, so if I'm home alone, I freak out. Like, I love my alone time because, well, I'm kind of split in the middle between introvert and extrovert, but I love to, I'm, I'm probably more on the introvert side. I love my alone time and all that, but holy shit, like, I have paranoia, and if I hear the slightest crack and it doesn't sound normal, it doesn't sound like the fridge, it does not sound like, you know, like the walls or something. It sounds like something else. I would not be going checking under certain things, objects, just in case someone was living under there. Like, you know, my bed, you can't even look under there because I like to have a base. Just in case someone was living under my bed. That is terrifying. Whoo. Just, I've got chills. Seriously. Man, come on now. Is this a woman or male? It's obviously a male because a woman wouldn't do this. I mean, a woman probably would do it, but like. Whoo. Man, you got to be some brave human being because, man, I'm, I'm a bit of a, I'm a bit of a pussy myself. <laughs> I'd be running away. Paranoia kicking right in. The reality of the situation just became so much more real, and I realized I wasn't ready to threaten or, God forbid, shoot someone. I got up and quickly went downstairs, and I hid in the bathroom to call my dad. He still didn't pick up. I left another voicemail, and then I called again and again. He never picked up. He must have had his phone set down somewhere. I finally called 911, as I should have done right away. I whispered into the phone the whole time, detailing exactly what was taking place. I was told to sit tight in the bathroom and not say a word. I heard footsteps coming down the stairs, and then they approached the bathroom door as if whoever it was somehow knew I went straight to the bathroom. The footsteps stopped outside the door, and there was a brief pause before a deep voice said, What's up, kid? I still remember the voice and those words so vividly. If I heard that voice... <laughs> This video. I don't know how I'm gonna make it through this video. I'm trying to get through the video, but every bit I'm just like freaking out. What if someone like like in my window said, "What's up?" I'm like, oh. Hold on. Hold on a second. Just hold. <laughs> oh, I, I just, I'm just, I don't even want to stand. I have my feet under here because I'm 
freaking out. What's up, kid? Like, hell nah. You got me fucked up about that. Today, I still recognize it immediately. <laughs> I almost wanted to cry. That's how scared I was. Same. I disobeyed what the <laughs> operator told me. I spoke. I said loud and clear, I'm on the phone with the cops right now. I have a gun. I put the operator on speaker as she was asking me if everything was okay. <laughs> the man attempted to open the door. When he realized it was locked, I heard him walk away. I heard the footsteps fade to silence, and then the sound of a door slam. It was the sound of the back door. I'm sure I breathed a sigh of relief. And from there on, I waited for the police to arrive. When they did, I felt like a million pounds just lifted off my shoulders. Same. After a third I would have been very inside and out, confirming that the man was gone, they asked if there was anywhere else I could stay that night. And I said, yes, my uncle's house. We contacted my uncle, who came and spoke with the police. Then he took me back to his place. The thing that haunts me the most is that it was my fault. I could have prevented this. I left the door unlocked. Yeah, you dumb bug. Clearly, that's when the man simply walked right into the house. Even with a rifle in my hands, I didn't feel safe at all. It was truly the most horrific experience of my life. Ooh, same, bro. Same. Uh, yeah. That was absolutely terrifying. About nine. I was going to go, like, an eight and a half, but as soon as he said, like, what's up, kid, I'm like, God, no. Like, hell no. That that was the last straw for me, my soul to leave my body. Uh, I don't care if you were harmless. I don't care if you, you know, you were just there to steal a couple of items. I don't care if you were there to... Steal food from my fridge because you were homeless. If you came up to my bathroom where I'm, you know, freaked out as it is, and you say, What's up, kid? I'm like, Oh, hell no. Nah. I would have just gone. And my soul would have left my body and it would have gone straight to, like, you know, the afterlife, the here and after, uh, hereafter, whatever. I was 18 when my parents went away on a week-long anniversary trip. My sister had already moved out by this point, so I had to hold the fort. My parents' property was enclosed by woods and a dirt driveway leading to the road. The road is a quiet back road with equally sized properties running alongside it, all of them separated at a decent distance, so it's a really isolated feel up there. Everyone in town knows each other. You see familiar faces all the time for the most part. Hungry Jack's Chicken Prizes. At the bars, which I learned a few years later, I started going to them. Speaking of gas stations, this story starts one day while my parents were away. I was at a gas station filling up my tank when a black Jeep Cherokee pulled up to the pump next to mine. A man with a goatee stepped out, greeted me, and started filling his tank. In that town, it was normal for strangers to greet each other like that. He had his nozzle locked into the gas tank, and then he walked around to my side of the pump and went, Excuse me, you know how to get to the interstate from here? I helped him to the best of my ability. He pulled out a notepad and started writing down the directions I gave him. Very odd how he wouldn't just do that on the cell phone like anyone else would. He thanked me and asked if I'm from the area. I said, Yeah, I grew up here. He said he's from out of town. He didn't specify where. He then went back to his side and put the nozzle back on. He then asked my name, as he said, it's nice meeting you. I said, my name's Kate. He said, what why would you give... And I got in his car as I got into mine. No, why would you give him you... Why would you give him your name? Seriously. Like, why? Like, why? What was the, what was the reason? You could have just said, oh, you know, my name is, you know... This I guess you didn't give him his last your last name it would have been worse, but anyway. Whatever. I drove out first and turned left to go up the road back home. It was only a few minutes worth of driving before I was approaching our turn into the driveway. I slowed down and put my blinker on, then turned right onto the property. It was at that moment that I noticed the car behind me was that same black Jeep Cherokee. Ooh. He passed me as I turned into our driveway. He went the complete opposite way that I told him to go to get to the interstate. As he passed me, he didn't slow down or anything, so 
It seemed that maybe he just forgot the directions I gave him and went the wrong way. I let myself inside and went about the rest of my day doing whatever. I think it was that night that I was going out to meet up with my friends, but I stepped outside and walked to my car and heard the sound of footsteps nearby. Woo! Like I said, the house is enclosed by woods, so this was in the middle of the summertime. It could have been any number of animals. So I didn't investigate. I just got in my car and left. But when I got back home hours later and walked from my car to the house, a man's voice from out somewhere in the woods called out Kate. I got the chill because I looked around. Oh, come on! You should have stayed over your friend's place. Why? Why? <laughs> Kate. Oh, Kate. <laughs> shouldn't have gave you his... Shouldn't have said his, your name. Gave out your name. He wouldn't have had to say Kate. He would have just done the footsteps. Woo! And then in the panic, rushed open the front door. I slammed it shut and sat on the couch to breathe. The neighbors all knew my name, but the houses are not on top of each other, so it's a bit of a walk. There was no reason for one of them to call my name like that, like a creep, and what? not identify them. You don't assume it's the other guy? I decided to call my parents and tell them, and their explanation, as it must have been one of the neighbors, and while probably knock on the door, I didn't tell them about the encounter at the gas station. The next day, which was a Saturday, I stayed home most of the day, and later that night, I once again was going out to meet with my friends. After getting ready... Um, you're not going to call the police? Some random guy. You thought it was one of your friends. You couldn't tell the voice between. Like I'm pretty good with memory. I remember certain people's voices and that. But um, you don't remember that. Okay, cool. I went outside. And as I was walking to my car, I heard loud and clear from a not so far distance. Someone called Kate again. This time I didn't wait a second. I ran back inside the house and locked the door again. I called 911 this time, texting my family. While Seriously, going now you call them? They looked around the perimeter of the property with their flashlights, then came back and said to call again. This persisted. I didn't feel much better after this. It's not really like they did much. I refrained from going outside until the next day. I had work. I was a server at a nearby restaurant. I was working a late shift. I left the house in broad daylight, paranoid to hear that voice again. Thankfully, though, I didn't. Maybe seeing the police car finally scared them off. After many hours... By the way, a healthy way to life. ...to go home and collapse into bed. I pulled onto the property, parked my car out front, and walked to the front door. I stopped when I heard the sound of footsteps again. It didn't sound like an animal's footsteps, though. I stood on the front deck for a second, waiting. But then, that familiar voice yelled out again, saying, Kate, don't call the cops on me again, cutie. I yelled out, you need help, you're sick, and let myself inside. I called the cops once more. The cops came again, searched the perimeter again, and left. My parents told me I should stay at a friend's house for the night. I couldn't agree more. They would be back the following night. should have so done that before, while well, calling the cops. My friend Alex told me I could stay with her that night, so I packed a bag and was ready to go. I checked out the windows first to make sure the coast was clear. I then went outside and locked the door as fast as I could, then ran to the car. As I turned the key in the ignition, I heard something right to my left. Right outside the driver's side door was a man wearing a face mask trying to open the door. Hell no! Hell no! As I put the car in the and started hitting the glass with his <laughs> I looped my car around by the grass and sped down the driveway. I turned right up the road and didn't stop until I got to Alex's house. I was hysterically crying the whole drive there, but had Alex and her dad on the phone with me. He said he would have come and picked me up had he known the situation. He called the police together for a third time in total. A couple officers went to my parents' house to investigate again, make sure no windows were shattered or anything. One officer came to Alex's house, where I once again gave my description of what happened. This was probably the most action these cops had seen in a long time in this quiet town. Thankfully, my parents came home the next day, and I felt safe staying at home again. I fully believe the man at the gas station followed me home intentionally and scoped the place out, realizing I was by myself, 
for whatever reason, toyed with me until he actually tried to pounce and get me. I shouldn't have given my real name. And I should have been more alert to my surroundings and realized he was following me in my car that day. Some people are nuts and have way too much time on their hands. This incident was a huge motivating factor in my moving out to my own apartment a few months later. Yep. Serves you right. You shouldn't have gave out your name. But you did. <laughs> Some people, yo. Why? Just why? Why didn't she call the police after? Like, like before? Like, like on the first time she heard it? Not that they would have done anything, but like, I don't know. that's disturbing. She stayed over her friend's place the second time it happened. I would have called my bestie again, been like, don't want to be here. Anyway, give that one about a nine. I was going to go eight and a half, but he knows where you live. So I'm going to go nine again. Chills down my spine, that one. Hoo -hoo. Boom, 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 boom. All I remember is my entire family was gone. I was 15 or 16 years old. I was a big gamer at the time. I was obsessed with StarCraft, and admittedly, I'd sometimes spend a weekend night or two playing StarCraft or some other PC game. This was right before COVID lockdown started. I was playing StarCraft on my yeah, computer in my bedroom on the first floor. That's when the doorbell rang, twice. I hurried to the door, not wanting to be away from the game for too long in fear of losing. I got to the front door and said, who is it? As I always would if I was alone. A soft and weak voice on the other side said something that I couldn't hear. It sounded like a woman. I opened the door, the storm door still separating me and this older woman standing on the other side with a big smile on her face. She had her hands behind her back. I said through the door, can I help you? She said she needed to use a phone and asked if she could come inside. Ever since I was a little kid, I was always taught not to let a stranger into the house ever. That included women. Um, also, she should know. She should have her own phone because now these days people have their own phones. So don't care how old you are, you get yourself your own phone. Buy, save, get your money out, and buy yourself a phone. Seriously, I mean, I guess she doesn't have the money, but like. Yeah, no, sorry. Or go use like an um a telephone box. They're still around. They're like probably like five dollars. Nope, nope. The, that red sign's out the ass. Felt so awkward though. I didn't know how to turn her away. I redirected her to the library a few blocks down because they surely have a phone. Deep down, I knew the library was closed at this point, but I was just trying to get the stranger who was trying to get into my house to leave. She was still smiling, but what Close she said the door. Match, did not match her smile. She said, that's very rude to turn away an old lady asking for help. I replied the only way I could think to, but that was that my parents don't allow strangers into the house. It's a house rule. I slowly started closing the door. But yeah, I would have closed the door too. But... Was saying sorry. And she just stood there, not moving, but still smiling at me. And though her smile never changed, it suddenly felt much more menacing. I was walking back to my room, when the doorbell rang again. There was no way in hell I was opening the door again. That woman radiated weird vibes from the start. Maybe something was wrong with her. Maybe she wasn't all there. These were things I had no way of knowing. And maybe that was selfish of me to send her on her way. But I just wasn't opening the door for anyone when I was home alone. I went back to my game. Not too long after I sat back down, I heard something tapping on the window. It was a clinking type sound. Come on! I don't even want to film. <sighs> my window's like right here. And so, if someone did did that 
But hell no, come on now. Why do I watch these videos really late at night? <laughs> oh. God, no. That'd be the end of me. <laughs> you should have locked your doll. <laughs> Oh fuck. I thought that was somebody, but it was my chimes. No, hell no. I can't watch these ones. I have to watch a different Mr. Nightmare because these ones are putting chills down my spine. How'd you know which window yours would be? I'd call the police. A 15, 16 year old should know how to call police. To some crazy old woman who's probably clueless as to where she is. When she rang the doorbell a second and third time, I decided to go open the door and ask her if there's someone I can call for. Come her. on! Why would you open the door for her? Like, seriously. Why? Why would you open the door for her after, like, before? Why? 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 Like, why? Why? But when I opened the door, there was now a man on the other side. Who? He must be about 10 years younger than her. He said through the storm door, Have you seen my mother? I replied, saying, Yes, she came to my door just before. He then apologized to me and said she had dementia and got out of the house. I suddenly felt bad, but he asked me if he could come in for a minute, and again I felt awkward. Why did he need to come inside? I said the same thing that I told to the woman who he claimed to be his mother. I said we could just talk through this door. I then said that I think she went into my backyard because I heard something at my window. I told him he could go around back and check. He thanked me and walked down the walkway, and I thought he went into the backyard. But when I went to the back and looked out the back window, expecting to see him searching around, I saw nobody, not him or his mom. This was all too weird for me. I went to bed on the earlier side that night, just falling asleep with the TV. Where's your parents? Until I heard the clinking sound of the window again. Something metal was tapping on the glass. Come on. I remember the concerned man, and I decided to try and help. I went to the window, lifted the blind up with my hand, and I saw that woman outside my window with that same creepy smile. She was tapping a kitchen knife on my window. I closed the blind and crawled back into my bed. This didn't feel like it was actually happening. A suspiciously short amount of time later, the doorbell rang like four times. The clinking on the window stopped by this point. This was all too suspicious. It felt like some kind of robbery attempt. I ignored the doorbell. I stayed in my bed. I was going to wait this out. Come on! I wouldn't be calling the police. She has a knife. She has a weapon. Like... This is not some, like, finger tapping. This is, like, a weapon. This girl is holding a weapon and tapping with it. Like, she's obviously a threat, and the other guy is sus as hell. Like, seriously, why? Why are you just going to ignore this? I know you're 15 or 16, but come on, your parents must have taught you something. If there's something serious happened, call the police. You know, I've seen other videos that actually do it, call the police, and they're like 11 years old. Seriously. Yo, yo, yo. Holy shit. Um, again, if someone was tapping at my window with a knife, 
like a crazy person, a creepy, menacing person, old lady tapping, don't actually care how old you are, I'd be getting out of there. I'd be calling the police. Like, jeez. Or at this time, I wasn't the most social guy growing up. I also didn't want to call the police for some reason. Oh, for God's sake. I waited this all out until it finally stopped. The next morning, I told my dad what happened when I called him. He told me I was smart not to open the door. Everyone agreed that everything about it sounded like an attempted robbery. Is there a trick? Open the door so you lied to your family? Why would you lie to your family? Also, why would you write like you didn't open the door? You did open the door. This video is frustrating me to my core. I said maybe that woman really did have dementia, that the man was really her concerned son. Maybe, but it all seemed too coordinated. Why did he want to come into the house too? How did he even know she came to my house specifically? Why didn't he ever go into the backyard to look for her when I gave him permission to do so? Too many unanswered questions that lead me to believe I avoided something terrible happening if I opened that door. So as I mentioned at the start of the video, a week ago as I'm recording this, something happened to me personally that inspired me to revisit this theme. So my friend Cody asked me to watch his dog. Oh, okay. video oh little Baba. He barks a lot. So when he started barking like crazy at something going on outside, I didn't pay any attention to it besides telling him to be quiet a few times. That so dog's... he went to the back door and kept barking, I figured he wanted to go outside. So I was going to the back door to open it, but as I got close to the door, I realized someone was trying to open the door from the outside. And then I saw through the screen of the door, there was another guy looking right back at me. This was in the backyard, which was already alarming enough. It wasn't someone I recognized to be a family member of Cody's. So I asked him who he is, and he responded asking me if I'd seen Melissa. Melissa is Cody's younger sister who's in her 20s. Meanwhile, this guy looked like he was in his mid-50s and homeless. <laughs> so I told him he needs to leave. There's no Melissa who lives here. And he said, you sure? So I said, yeah, you need to leave. There's cameras all over the property. He left right after that. Getting him to leave was easy. But when Cody asked his sister who that guy could have been, she said she had no idea. The guy looked like he was 55, drunk, and filthy. Not exactly someone Cody's 20-something-year-old sister would be associated with. The fact that he went to the back door and tried letting himself in was actually pretty terrifying, because you can only imagine what he was trying to do to Melissa, and it's why so many of these stories could be avoided by just keeping your doors locked. Yeah, and not lying to your family. Um, yeah, that last one, probably, again, I'd say probably a nine again as well. They were all nines. I guess, no, I guess the, the first one was also a nine because the person was already in your house. So, yeah, had go a nine as well. Um, that last one was very disturbing, though, um, with the woman with the knife. I love how she just had a knife. Like, oh, yeah, if she had dementia, why, why was she even carrying the knife? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um... Yeah, you need to stop lying to your family and saying that you didn't open the door. You did open it. You opened it twice. Twice. You opened it once with the woman and then once with the man. And then you opened your window, kind of opened it. You opened your blinds and the woman was tapping with the knife. So stop lying to people. Whoo! But, yeah, I've got chills down my spine. Anyway, I give, yeah, like a nine. I give that one a nine. Yeah, they were ter terrifying. Whew. The chills. Like, there was a lot of stupidity in it, especially the last story. Um, second one wasn't great either. Um, again, that person should have, like, you know... They shouldn't have gave out their name. It's like... My name's Katie. It's like, no, your name's not Katie, you dumb person. Like, don't say your name's Katie. Because that will alert them and that will make them want to stalk you or something. Like, you don't know what people are like. People are unpredictable. That's why I prefer nature. Second to nature is animals and then people. 
Because, you know, I love animals. I love animals. Don't get me wrong. But, like, some animals scare me and all that. So nature has to come first. You know, I love nature. I'll, some things about nature. Some nature does scare me, though, too. Um, but, yeah, people are scary. People, you don't know what people are like. <sighs> but anyway, yeah, it's just the way it is, you know. Ooh, good chills down my spine. Those videos, I almost was going to click the video because I was actually terrified. Like, you had no idea. But anyway, yeah. Anyway, please subscribe. Turn the notification and click the bell beside you. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching. Bye.